thing keeps doing this. There's a lot of caverns. There's a lot of um, places that are unstable, like that will sink and sinkholes. And there's um, lands that are shifting and sliding and, and various things like that. And it's not just one area where you could say, hey, move to this state because they're not going to have a problem. It's happening all over the globe. So there's really nowhere that is truly fully stable that hasn't experienced some type of instability because of what they've done. Um, so we are looking at a, a need for some real prayer. We're looking at a need to stop being uh, childish and playing games and fighting and hating each other. And we, it's to the point where we need to start looking at how we're going to survive as a people. We have food issues. Um, I know they don't announce it. They don't come on the, you know, they do all these other announcements, but they don't come on the news and say, Hey, it's time to start growing your gardens indoors. It's it's time to start preparing. It's time to start buying some cattle and getting some chickens and get some stuff ready because we're about to have some serious food problems and food shortages. Uh, they're not telling you that, and they won't. They'll just let you sit and strive and suffer when it happens. But it's time to really start preparing for these things. There's going to be water issues. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. There will be people at that hour that will kill for water, that will kill for food. Um, it's not going to be a pretty place, you guys, the things that are coming. And this is why Jesus is imploring to you at this hour to reach out to him. It's an hour to reach out to Christ and say, please save me. Please count me worthy to escape the things that are coming because some really bad things are coming to this earth. Once we, the Christians, leave, if you think about it, we're annoying. We are. We we preach and we tell you what you're doing wrong and we try to point you to God and, you know, we pray for you and it's irritating and whatever. We sing and worship God. It annoys you, whatever it is. But you know what? There's a lot of beauty in our hearts. And we love people. We care about people. We help people. We give to people. We lift them up. We pray for you. Um... You know, we laugh. We bring a lot of joy and laughter because of God's joy on our life. Um, so there's a lot of blessings from having us here that are going to be gone when we leave. And you're go we hold back the darkness of hell. Even though you don't like us, we're holding back the fullness of Satan devouring this earth, okay? So we are the light of God. God has put us here to try to show you the light before the darkness comes, okay? So there's going to be an hour where we depart. And when we depart, there still will be some Christians here because they've rebelled against God and they haven't obeyed him. And so they're going to find out the hard way they're getting a portion with the unbelievers. So they, there's some that will be here and they'll get on fire then. They'll be fired up. But for the most part, most of the, the righteous spirit of God and the goodness will be gone from this earth. So what you're looking at, what happens if you take light out of a room? You shut the light off. You have utter darkness. So the three days of darkness, I'm getting this right now from the Lord as I speak. The three days of darkness is going to be a warning to mankind of what's to come permanently. And it's a time for repentance. It's a time to get the fear of the Lord. And, and God is going to give the earth some darkness. He's going to allow it. Because he wants you to see what's coming permanently. That you may then turn and say, okay, I want the light, God. I don't want this. Because you're going to see fully when that happens what it's going to be like. Now, the, the if, if we are here during this period, which we may be, I'm not sure. I don't know for sure. Um, the Christians will be in their homes. They won't go out. They will stay before the Lord and obey the Lord. But either way, whether we're here or not, it doesn't matter. That three days is your warning. Anything to do with a three is God, okay? It's usually a warning from God. Like, pay attention. So three days, it will be dark. And then I guess there will be light again for a while. But the sun will be completely blackened at some point. So you need to really pay attention and really seek the Lord because that three days is going to show you what your eternity will feel like to some degree. Not as bad as what it will feel like, but an inkling of it. And with no light, no laughter, no happiness, no joy, no love, no peace, just chaos. Um, think of like the, you know, some of these riots you see in the streets. That's going to be earth after we're gone. 
You're not going to see a lot of loving, nurturing. You're not going to see stories on the news where so-and-so helped an old lady cross the street. You're not going to see the, any good stories ever at that point. It's going to be all evil. So it's an hour to really think about this. Do you want to be here then? Is it worth it to you? Is money worth it to you? Is fame worth it to you? Is anything worth it to you to give up the light and love of God for all eternity? I would say no, it's not. That's my choice, though. Nothing is worth losing God. I want to tell you, I had a dream years ago, and I had just had a baby. I was very heavy, and I had a dream. The enemy was trying to tempt me, and he showed me a dream. He took me into this house, and there was all these jewelry and clothes and um you know just fashion and shoes and beauty and and I went to the mirror and I totally transformed and I was all skinny and hot and beautiful and and um and it was like money and all this stuff and I was like what about God and he says well if you had this you wouldn't have God so I walked out because I'm not giving up God for nothing Nothing is worth it, you guys. Nothing is worth losing God. And and those of you who don't know God and haven't got to know Him, I'm sorry. Because some of us have failed you in telling you about it. Some of us have failed to show and demonstrate the true love of God. The true power of God, even. Some of us have enabled you to continue in your sin. Some of us have allowed you to continue, you know, being suicidal and being drug addicts and being alcoholics. And, and you know, doing the things you've done. Being murderers, even. Some of us have spoken these things on you. Um, so, I, I ask that you forgive us for our failures failures as representatives of Christ but that you would not hold it against God or against Jesus Christ for the things that his servants have done that may have swayed you from not choosing him I'm telling you like if you are a Satanist and you've done a blood covenant with the enemy God Jesus Christ's blood is more powerful Jesus can still save you he will save you and he will protect you from the devil. No matter how much the devil tries to intimidate you or put fear in you or try to control you or tell you or boss you or hold you captive. You, you aren't held captive if Christ intervenes. You will be free. The devil won't like it, but you will be free. And you can be saved, okay? You can be saved. It's not too late for you. I thank you, Jehovah God, that you are reaching people right now. I thank you, Jehovah God, that you are touching some people right now that have, have been evil, that they've given themselves over to evil and, and been lewd and, and divisive and evil, God, and done uh, even worship of the enemy, God. I thank you that you're saving them. I thank you that you're sparing some, God. I thank you that you're sparing them from the things to come. And I ask that you would protect them, God. Uh, 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 those who choose you, God, as they, as they have the chance to choose you, I pray you put a special protection on them, a special anointing upon them, that they would come in, that they would be held under your wings, God, and that they would be utterly protected, and all evil would be cut off, all roots of evil divide, that would just be pulled out of them, God, that they would be delivered, God, that they would be healed and saved, God, by your Spirit. I ask this for terrorists, God. I ask this for Muslims, God. I ask it for Satanists. I ask it for witches, God. I ask it for all... Um, uh, idolatrous uh, religions God I ask it for nations God I ask it for all the unsaved I don't care what category what, how we could categorize them if they are not saved if they do not know you Jesus if they do not know you God I ask that you save them even for the Jewish people that haven't come to Christ I ask for salvation across the globe God I ask that you pour salvation I ask that you do a mighty work you know Years ago, I, you always hear about all these preachers that spend all this money. They got planes and they got this and they got that. And they fly here and they preach. And they've reached people. They have. But there's got to be a better way is what I told God. That it shouldn't have to take all these, this money and all this stuff to, to get this done and accomplish this. So being a fairly simple person, I said, God, I'm very efficient and very, um, very simple. I just like to cut to the chase and get to the simple part of stuff and, and to make it more efficient and more make sense. So um, I said, God, there's got to be a better way to do this. You know, can't we send postcards or something? Can't we send postcards to every person on earth? Like here, Jesus Christ or not, you know, this is your choice. Give them a choice, let them choose. Um, but there's got to be a way. So 
what the Lord responded with was prayer. And he told me to begin to pray for um, visions to come to people, for dreams and visions and encounters with him himself. And, and essentially what he was saying was, I'm asking you to pray to hand the job over to me because you guys aren't doing it right, basically, is what God was saying. Um, ministry to me means men is trying. Men, men is try. We tried, but we're not doing a very good job, so God, we need you to come do this, okay? Because I don't have to lay hands on you for you to get saved. God can come to you in your living room. He can come to you in your bedroom. He can come to you at your job. He can come to you in your backyard. He can come to you in the bathroom. He can come to you wherever he wants to and say, hey, it's your hour for salvation. I decided to save you. I love you. I didn't forget you. I know you spent all these years toiling and, and, and suffering, but here I am. I'm ready to save you. And then you can choose yes or no. That's your choice. God gives you a choice. He doesn't make you do anything. So um, so he had me begin to pray for Muslims and, and Chinese people and et cetera, nations, you know, basically that aren't saved, to begin to have these encounters with him and then um, and to have dreams and visions poured on them. And this, this is like 15 years ago, okay? But since then, there have been a lot of testimonies of Muslims, thousands of them, having dreams and visions. And the reason being it has nothing to do with me, it was God asking me to pray this for his intervention um, so that he himself, he could have a son and himself do the work because we're not being effective in what we're supposed to be doing or we haven't been because the effective ministry is the Holy Ghost. And we sometimes as people of God, so you can understand, we think, okay, we're in a church, we're preaching, we're going to church every week. That's all we're supposed to do. But some of us have gone a little farther with God where we're like, what about these guys? You know, we can have fun and sit in God's presence, but what about, uh, what about John or Joe or whoever that didn't know God? What, how do we get them in here? How, how, they won't come to the church. Most of you won't come to church if you're not saved. You're not going to just like show up at church unless God draws you there powerfully, which that does happen at times. But for the most part, some of you will never step foot in a church. You don't want to. Um, and those are the ones that I'm focused on in this hour. Um, as God's leading me to tell you, you don't have to go to church to find God. Okay, you don't have to be straight to find God. You can be gay and God will come to you where you're at. He may change your lifestyle over time. He will change you. you it's, there's no doubt God will change you. He's changed me over decades, like constantly changing me and evolving me and growing me and maturing me and dealing with me and healing me and taking pain and, you know, just different things like that. But... I can tell you that of all the things I've done on this earth, and I've done quite a few things, there's nothing like loving God, and there's nothing like knowing God. There's no one that will ever touch you the way that God touches you. There's no sex that can take that place. There's nothing. There's no perversion that can, nothing can match what God is in your life once you allow him, once you allow that love. And many of you have not been loved ever. You never had anyone that purely loved you. You never had anyone that cared, you know, that you were tired or cared that you were sick or cared that you were destroying yourself or cared that you were, you know, going off on a wrong path or took the time to reach out to you and say, hey, don't, you know, don't do this. Some of you were abused and beaten and and um, gone through horrible rituals. And, and I, I'm seeing the different things that God's showing me of what some of you have endured. And they're very hard things. They're harder things than most um, most of the population has had to endure. And so some of us came to the Lord easier because we didn't suffer as much as you have. Um, and so some of you are like questioning if God was real, why would he have allowed you to suffer in these manners? But the choice is ours, you know, and... I'm sorry you didn't know about God. I'm sorry that maybe somebody didn't help you. I'm sorry that your, you know, maybe your parents taught you the wrong things or or maybe your families led you in the wrong way or your friends or your uh, associates at work or whatever. I'm sorry that you weren't taught correctly that God loves you, you know, and that you were, weren't given um those opportunities earlier in your life. But God 
um, can take that and he can turn it around and he can save you in a way now and he can bless you so much now it'll be like you never didn't have him okay and he can heal all the past and all the pains and all the wounds and all the tormenting thoughts and phrases and the negativity you have about yourself and others he can take it all away from you the lies the fears the the um, chaos the restless nights of not being able to sleep um, the the desire to fight the compulsions to do drugs the compulsions to drink the compulsions to do sex the compulsions to molest and kill and, and I understand these compulsions God is showing me some of the things that you guys are suffering but Jesus Christ can take it do you understand what I'm saying He's the only one that can take it. You may not have anyone in your life that could get around you and put up with it. But Jesus Christ can. And he'll come in and he'll be like, okay, we know, we both know this is wrong. We know it's wrong to kill. I mean, even people that don't know God know that. Even though they may do it, they know it's wrong. So let's, let's get that out. God will take the root out of you. He'll take the root out of you. The roots of fear, the roots of anger, all of this stuff he'll deliver you. And then you'll just be at peace with him, okay? And it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. There's nothing like it on this earth, okay? And I know it's, you know, these things might be hard to palate for those who don't know God, but I'm telling you that God is more powerful than the darkness that operates in you. And though the enemy may be trying to destroy you, even by your own um, acceptance, God still wants to save you. So if you want. To have a different life ask Jesus and he will save you he will save you he will lift you up out of the despair out of the the situations out of the fear out of the circles out of the the confusion the chaos just the crazy stuff that some of you are going through the angers the the rages, the tirades, the fits, the drama, the all of it. The rantings, the, the suicidal moments, the vomiting in the toilet moments, the jonesing on the floor of the bathroom with a needle in your arm and and dying, coming back to life, and dying, coming back to life, you know, seeing hell, you know, just different stuff that you guys are going through. God is showing me a variety of things that people are enduring. It there, You don't have to do this anymore. Okay, I call it over. I call it time for you to come home and be loved and be healthy and be happy. God loves you. I pray that God shows you he loves you because some of you just don't know and you can't comprehend that someone or some anything could love you, but God does. God loves you. It's going to be okay. Just accept it. Just accept that God loves you and come out of it, okay? I feel the battle. I feel the battle for souls right now. Father, I thank you and praise you, God, that you would manifest. Jesus Christ, you are a saving Lord. I thank you and praise you that you will manifest in the lives of the unsaved. Even this hour, God, that you will manifest in their lives. Go to those deep, dark places, God. Go to the darkest, darkest places. I call forth the light of Almighty God to the darkest places. And I praise you for salvation to reign. I praise you for those crevices to be filled with light, filled with love, God. I praise you for it. Ha! In Jesus' name, I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Move. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your saving name. Hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Pour your love over them. Pour your peace through them. Pour your joy out upon them, God. Let it be as though they never served darkness, as though they never known darkness. I praise you. Addictions are toppling. Chains are breaking. I thank you, God. I praise you, God. Ha! Anoint your warriors, God, to be able to stand for these souls, God. You guys, Jesus is not going to take us out of this earth without reaching you. 
you understand? Like some of, some of the other Christians are like, forget you guys, die, perish. I've even been there a few times because some of the stuff that's been done to me. But there are people who are giving up on you. They don't want to sit and pray for you. They're ready to go. They like forget you guys. Who cares what happens to you? I care what happens to you. I don't want to see you guys left behind in this mess. I don't want to see you guys perish for eternity. Okay, I may be annoying, but I actually care. I actually freaking care. And I'm imploring with you, please, please give Jesus a chance. Please call on the name of the Lord. And he said, you're not going to have to go through some formal prayer. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that means all you have to do is say, Jesus. You in the pit? Jesus.